In 2005, a guy named Alex Tu built this website right here. Now the entire website is simply what you see. It's 1,000 pixels long by 1,000 pixels high, and that's all it is. The only other thing he put on the website was an option to buy each of these pixels. Now for those of you that are math experts, we have a million pixels, and he was selling each pixel for $1. He was able to get a little bit of traction for his website with a little bit of PR, and companies started to buy up chunks of these pixels to put their advertisements on the site. It was only a few months later that he was able to make $1 million selling each of these individual pixels for one single dollar. Now that kind of got me wondering, what are some other ways that people are making money in strange fashions today? And I'm probably gonna focus on mine because that's kind of the nature of this channel. One thing I should add, I'm not endorsing any of these methods, okay? I'm not teaching you or showing you or telling you that you should use these. This is more for entertainment than for education. And now that I've got everyone wondering why I'm holding this banana, we'll move on to the first one, and that's something called a mukbang. Now I'm surprised I've never heard of this because it's a pretty big trend online apparently. It actually originated in Korea, but what a mukbang is, eating food online. But it's not just eating, whew, that was tough. It's not just eating food online, it's actually eating large quantities of food online while addressing an audience. So this could be considered a mukbang. For me, anything more than one bite of a banana is a large quantity of banana. So, mukbang it is. Now, I thought maybe this is just a small trend or you know a few people are, are succeeding at this, but this is actually a major thing, not just in Korea right now. It's actually huge in the US as well. You can see right here, we've got a ton of videos. This one's got 96,000 views. This one's got 700,000, 97,000. 5 million, 1 million, and the, the biggest one I've seen is this one right here, 34 million views on a ASMR mukbang black bean fire noodle and chicken nugget no talking eating sounds video. Eating sounds video. Eating sounds video. Sounds video. I'm scared to click, but that says it's a 12 minute video of someone eating a lot of food without talking and we get to hear the eating sounds. But like I said, this isn't just in Asia. You can see right here, there's a really big channel, a couple big channels in the US as well. This is a, a channel called More Nikado that's built all around eating lots of food for people to watch. Now I started to look around and try to figure out how these guys are actually making money. The biggest way is a lot of these guys get a ton of views. So apparently a lot of people wanna watch this and there's a lot of views to be had in this world. But a lot of them are also selling merch. And the last way they're making money is actually exclusive Patreon channels where people get access, access to exclusive content. I'll be honest, I'm not sure sure what kind of exclusive content you could give in this world. Uh, maybe you get videos of them eating even more food or strange foods, I don't know. But that's, that's the primary way these guys are making money. Some of them are making millions and millions of dollars a year just eating lots and lots of food. Oh, nice job, where do I apply? Now, as you can imagine, this is not the healthiest way to make a lot of money. And in fact, this channel we're focusing on right here used to look like this. And after a few years of doing this channel, he now looks like this. And doing some research, he's done all kinds of interviews where he confesses that he's had a lot of health issues, uh, both physical and emotional health issues that came from having this kind of lifestyle. So I definitely am not recommending this as a side hustle for somebody. And honestly, that's kind of sad because I can relate to this. YouTube is a world and, and social media in general is a world where it rewards extremism and doing crazy things to make money. You take my money. And some of these guys have fallen a prey to that, uh, that pressure to frankly do things that are not good for you in order to get those views. Me, on the other hand, I'm eating a banana. Oh good, we can move on to number two. Number two is actually a game called Second Life, and it turns out that I've actually heard about this years and years ago, and many of us have through the TV show The Office, where Dwight confesses that he has been playing Second Life and been living essentially his same first life in Second Life, with one caveat, he can fly. In this episode, uh, Dwight is going through some turbulent times in his personal life, and so he creates an account on Second Life and starts living a very similar life in this virtual world that is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Second Life is all the things you have in real life, but digitally in a non-real world. So you live a life in a metaverse or a digital universe, but it's very, very similar to the one we have here. You can go to school, you can build businesses, you can you know, do all the things that you do now, shopping, all that stuff that you, you enjoy and kind of just do as part of your regular life, you do in this regular digital world. Now the cool thing here is people are actually, just like we build businesses in this world, they're building businesses in that world and they're selling things in digital stores and, and building up businesses there. They're 
buying and selling land and creating real estate empires inside this digital world where money can be pretty easily exchanged back and forth between this second life digital world and US dollars in the real world. And on that note, I did a bunch of searches and there is story after story of people making full-time incomes from just living in this digital world, uh, specifically and especially on the real estate side. And if that interests you, we're gonna link here to another video that shows you kind of more details about these ways that people are making money here. I'm probably never gonna make a video about it and so we're gonna link to someone else's video. I do hate sending you away from my channel, but like I said, probably not gonna be a video we make any time soon. And one more thing on that note, I'm not a financial advisor, I don't give investment advice, but I do firmly believe that digital worlds, metaverses, virtual reality universes are going to be huge in the next five to 10 years, and there'll literally be billions of people spending significant amounts of time in these worlds. Now, as most of us know, where people spend their time is also where people spend their money, and there will be a lot of money in these digital worlds. Just something to think about. The next one I wanna talk about is one of my favorite ones, primarily because of the song that is associated with them, uh, and it's called I want to draw cats for you.com. This was started a few years ago by a guy named Steve. You can see when you go to the site right here, we get to meet Steve and he draws cats, not just any cats, okay? He draws these cats. Now on Etsy, you'll see some killer artists drawing incredible pictures of cats, one including the one my wife drew right here. But Steve tends to focus on a different, more unique type of cat audience. Now this is just great proof that anything can sell and if you can get enough eyeballs on a project, you'll probably get some sales at the same time. And that's exactly what Steve did. Now how did he get all those eyeballs on this killer cat project? This little video he released a few years ago right here. I'm pretty good looking, I'm an average guy. I work in computers, that's no lie. But that's not what I want to do. I want to draw a cat for you. I want to draw a cat for you. I want to draw a cat for you. Now, if you're anything like me, you watched that video and you wanted to buy a cat. I'll draw you a cat that's short and fat. I'll draw you a cat with a pork pie hat. I'll draw you a cat, whatever the vibe. I'll draw the- It took me about four minutes to draw this picture right here. And I gotta say, I think they look pretty similar. So I think on the hourly, he's doing just fine. And in fact, after doing some research, he made about $200,000 his first year just with these cat drawings. I want to draw a cat for you. I want to draw a cat for you. That's catchy. Now the next one's kind of near and dear to me because it's kind of a sad story where I didn't take someone seriously and I missed out on a lot of money because of it. I actually had an employee reach out to me almost four or five months ago now and say, hey, you should look into this opportunity. I think it's going to be big. I didn't take it as seriously as I should have and it passed me by. But what it is is playing a digital game again called Axie Infinity. And this is huge right now. There's a lot of people making quite a bit of money doing this. Now essentially what it is is it's kind of like the Pokemon game. If you were a, if you were a kid and you used to get out all those Pokemon cards and trade them with people. It's very similar to this, but all done online. And what you do is you buy these little digital pets, I guess you could say. Hopefully I didn't offend anyone. You buy these things called axes. Each of these axes have different talents and skills and things like that. Then you line up in this digital universe and you battle with other people's axes and you can win all kinds of things. You can sell your axes. You can rent out your axes. You can sell potions and things inside of this axie metaverse. And it's very easy to exchange money from this you know, world of Axie Infinity money into this regular world of whatever cash you currently hold. And this is just one of the reasons that once again, I don't give financial advice, but I do believe that crypto is an awesome bet. The entire game of Axie Infinity is built upon the crypto Axie Infinity. Come on. Now the last one is honestly one of my favorite ones and kind of one of the sadder ones. And that's someone called the IPO man. I just read about him very, very recently on a Wired article from years and years and years ago. Now what he did is he took the idea that you can sell anything with an IPO, right? So a company sells shares of a company in an IPO and now all the investors are partial owners in the company. They can vote on what the company does and then when the company makes money, they get to take some of those profits. Now the IPO man did this exact same idea except for the fact that he sold himself. So in 2008, he divided himself into 100,000 shares and he sold each share for a dollar. Now he didn't sell a ton of shares, but as he got some more PR, he was able to sell a few more shares. Now the way it worked is his investors would be able to take a portion of the profits from anything that he did uh, on the side. So anything besides his main job, which he used to survive, any of his side hustles or anything like that, they got a portion of the profits. And because they were now owners, they were able to now vote and choose and decide what he did with his time outside of his job. Your wish is my command, sir. So we paid a developer to build a site and the site uh, allowed his people to buy and sell shares of 
him. Do you want a piece of me? And then it also allowed them to vote and make decisions for what he was going to do with his life. Now, if you're anything like me, you're pretty quickly seeing exactly what can go wrong here. And guess what? Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. It started when he got a girlfriend and investors no likey. No. Personal relationships aren't great for profits, and now that his time outside of work was beholden to these investors, they didn't want him spending all of his time building up these personal relationships that weren't going to yield them profits. It got worse when shareholders decided that he needed to get a vasectomy because kids were going to hurt their profits. His girlfriend didn't like that, and so she actually was able to buy some of the shares, and then I believe convince a few shareholders to switch their vote. Now, an interesting note about that, my kids are actually the biggest motivation for me and my digital business, and I doubt shareholders were understanding that, but one of the biggest things that motivates me to keep going and building this online business that I build is my actual kids. Now, after a few years, his shares were actually selling for more than $11 a share, which is an 11X return, and that brought his total market cap value as a person to over $1 million. But then things got even weirder when his company started to offer him a life insurance policy, which means that he was now worth $100,000 to these shareholders if he was dead. So these investors could technically vote for him to go jump off a cliff because he's worth more dead to them than he is alive. Now obviously they didn't do that, but the concept of it, a little strange. The story goes on with shareholders doing all kinds of strange, strange things like choosing his girlfriends for him based on what will make them the most profit. I like this one. He had girlfriends that wanted to have stock options in the company and voting rights and things like that. And all in all, just a whole bunch of drama that nobody wants and nobody needs. In the end, all this drama obviously made a great movie. A couple years ago, they put out a movie about this exact thing. And you can go ahead and watch that if you want to learn more about the IPO man. Let me know in the comments which of these is the weirdest of the five ways people have made money. And of course, this channel is all about ways to actually make money online that work for a lot of people, not just one single person. So go ahead and give us a sub if that's something you're looking to do. And the next video will probably help you do that.